who's speaking and makes them the, the focus of your, your attention. Uh, and they're all, all seven council is on. We also have Kevin Chestnut, John Rogers, Mary Catherine, Taylor, Lynn Smith, Dale, and Lee right now. And Jeff, okay. sorry. Hi, everybody. Adam, um, what we were thinking about doing is having uh, all of the staff members do stop video so that council can only see them. That may make it easier whenever they're, they're looking for votes. Um, so if you all want to do that, if you look for your video in the top corner, you can hit the three dots and hit stop video for you. So mine, you should just now see my picture. I'll leave mine up so you can see my pretty face. <laughs> and your antics. So what happened to William? He just turned into a... Uh, well, I did I did what Taylor said, and it just has my name now. I was only oh, see, that was, that was for staff, not for just, you. Yeah, just staff, William. You can still keep you, your video up. You should have had that second and third lesson. Taylor, I just put the, uh, uh, the link live. All right, I'll share it now. Jeff, did you want to take your video off as well? I'm gonna hear shortly, I'm gonna make the mayor the host so she can see the thumbs up and people raising their hands, uh, then take my video off and put it on the access channel. Good deal. All right, everybody, we are about to go live on YouTube. All right, I can't see the time. It's 525, Mayor, you got five minutes. Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, somebody just alert me when it's 5.30, please. That's Jeff, I don't have control of my volume. I still don't have my little hand raise. You can just raise your hand in person. <laughs> That'll work. I see it. Is the mayor going to call out who makes the motions for me if I can't see it? Yes, mayor, do you mind doing that so Barbara can record it? I'll be glad to. Also, when you do votes, if you can make sure that everyone has the opportunity to either be seen or, or heard so that Barbara can record that as well. Okay. I may need to be reminded, but please, I'll, I think I can do that. Taylor, do you have the ability to record? I made the mayor host before I hit the record button and now I can't do it unless I become the host again. Um, let me see. I can do it. Record on this computer? Yes. Yes, I can do it. I'm recording too. I'm recording. I think we got it covered. I have two people blacked out right now. Yeah, we have, staff is all connecting without video, so you won't see their face pop up when you are making your motions, et cetera. So you might see some of the, just the names on your screen until we get going. I've lost Shane and William. They're both there. I don't mind. I promise I hadn't left you, Jane. There you are. Huh? 
how will we do public input? People had to make a comment either by email or by um, phone up until noon today. We took public inputs. We had almost a week of public input before today. And Barbara will read those comments during public input. Thank you. Also, just to let you know, we are live on YouTube right now. So this, this is going on right now on YouTube until the meeting starts. I just realized that um, I don't have, maybe I can use my phone for a copy of the actual agenda. I better get that. Sorry, Dory. I have five thirty. Yes, it is 5.30, Mayor. All right, thank you. Um, it is 5.30 on April 6, 2020. I officially opened this meeting of the County City Council. Uh, this is a first for us in, in more ways than one. Uh, we will be utilizing Zoom technology. Uh, I wanna thank the staff who's worked really diligently on making this happen this evening. Keep us safe as we meet. Uh, by the same token, I would like to uh, ask every every participant, whether you're actively participa participating or, or just listening in, um, that this is new and uh, subject to some jolts along the way. We will move as smoothly as we can. Uh, I'll ask Madam Clerk if we are in fact in compliance with the Freedom of Information Act. Yes, ma'am, we are. Thank you. And um, I will also ask you, Madam Clerk, if you would please conduct a roll call and determine the existence of a forum. Yes, ma'am, you're here. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Shane Hubbard. Here. Thank you. Uh, Alex Hyman. Here. Jean Timms. Here. Larry White. Here. William Goldfinch. Here. Justin Jordan. Here. That's a full quorum. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, and now I will offer an invocation, after which time uh, I will lead the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, God, for our lives. Thank you for your generous blessings. We face an enemy today that we cannot see, one that threatens our lives, our health, our economy, in our lifestyles. We ask that you be our protector as we fight the spread of the deadly and destructive coronavirus. Please be our guide as we make decisions that affect people with conflicting interests. In our leadership, help us to be prudent, responsive, and selfless. These things we ask in your name, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now um, ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda. Now, I see two hands, and I don't really know how. Ms. Timms, I see Ms. Timms' face. I make a Is motion. Is that Adam, an indication that she was the first? Yes, ma'am, would you please? I make a Did motion to make the agenda. Thank you, ma'am. And whoever that second hand was, 
Is there a that second? That was me, Mayor. I would second it. Alex. Thank you, Thank you so much. Um, and that sounds like um, Alex Hyman. Yes, Mayor. Seconding the motion. Okay. Thank you very much. We have a properly seconded motion to approve the consent agenda. Um, all in favor, if you would say aye. 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 So far, Madam Clerk, I've heard um, William Goldfinch, uh, Larry White, uh, yours truly. I don't know that there are additional. There were, there were uh, thumbs up from Justin, Alex, Shane, and William as well in there. Okay. Somehow I don't see that. So I may need your your um, help from now. I'll help you on that. Now and then. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, and now we will go to item uh, to the approval of the regular agenda. Uh, I move that items town and public hearings are more accessible for public participation. This particular item is not an emergency. Uh, is there anyone uh, who would second that motion? Mayor, I'll and second. I, thank you so much. And that was Mr. Hubbard. Uh, Mr. Hubbard, seconds my motion to amend the regular agenda to defer any action being taken on item six at this time. Is there any discussion? Uh, apparently there is none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And if thumbs or hands are being, yeah, William Goldfin says yes. There are thumbs from William, Shane, Alex, and Justin. And, and I believe that makes uh, the vote unanimous. Larry as well, yes. Okay, thank you so much. So should I, should I just ask for a hand be raised instead of asking for a verbal response? I think either way is fine. And I can report the ones that are, are giving the thumbs up if you'd prefer. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Now, uh, now we are at item, uh, Five, uh, the city has been accepting public input uh, for uh, about a week now. I understand that um, members of the public might have uh, called in any comments that they would make if we if they were in person this evening, or they might have telephoned or emailed uh, answers. So, um, Ms. Uh, Madam Clerk, Ms. Tessier, if you would please uh, report to the council. Uh, the uh, results of the public input that you've received. Yes, ma'am. Um, we received one phone call. Um, his name was William. I could not understand his last name. He is not a resident of the city, but he wanted to voice support for council in their efforts uh, to contain the virus. The uh, um, He felt that the governor had not taken enough steps and he wanted to applaud the city for, for moving ahead. We also have an email from David Sellers. He lives at 1019 4th Avenue. He said, I agree with restricting as much interaction of the public as possible, but if we have, as citizens are not breaking CDC or South Carolina guidelines, is it legal for a city to impose basically a jail sentence with the get out of jail hard to go get gas or food or essential work. I feel it should be to enforce the rules that the governor has in place and to strictly follow CDC guidelines. I personally walk every afternoon at the Riverwalk and down city blocks for exercise. In doing so, the past couple of weeks, I have strictly followed those gu guidelines given by the governor and CDC. If Conway is seeing people that aren't, then put something in place to enforce those guidelines. Do not restrict further movement by your co constituents beyond what the state and CDC have already recommended and enacted. The next one is from Carla Lemon. Um, I have no address for her. She says that she believes there should be a, uh, let's see. I, in reference to a stay at home order, I believe it should be in place for the state of South Carolina. I am not sure what the governor is thinking and not putting in place, but he is not. Therefore, I'm appealing to the city of Conway to do the right thing and put a stay in place order. Conway needs to do something to protect their residents because the governor is not. Please do the right thing and put a stay in place order. 
I know people that have congregated together and ones that have ignored the park closures and go anyway. Please put this matter to protect us. And the last one is from Brian Lemon. I would like to say that I would be strongly in favor of a stay at home order for Conway. It's a shame that the governor couldn't stand strong and make the right decision for his state, but hopefully our council can make the right choices. If done at the right time proactively, it may seem like an overreaction because infection rates will remain low. If done once the number of infections increases significantly, it is already too late. A quick and decisive action now can save lives and facilitate faster social and economic recovery. Thank you so much. Uh, is there a motion then at this point to uh, close public input? There is a motion from Alex Hyman, seconded by William Goldfinch. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, with that having been reported, um, all in favor, um, raise your hand, please. I noticed that there are two, four hands. Hands raised from Larry, Jean, Alex, Justin, William, and Shane. And please add mine. So that moves unanimously. Thank you so much. You will recall that uh, we've just removed item six from the agenda and we'll move forward with item seven. Being first reading of ordinance ZA 2020-0406D, an ordinance to annex approximately two acres of property located at 3954 Long Avenue Extension, TMS 1110002016, and request a rezone from Horry County Commercial Forest Agriculture to City of Conway Low to Medium Density District. Ms. Hyman. Yes, this is an existing home that has city utilities, but it's recently changed ownership and therefore uh, annexation paperwork was required. Thank you. Is there, are there any comments or is there any discussion needing to be made? Or is there a motion to take action on this request? Mayor, William had his hand up and then followed by Alex. Okay. Mayor, I move that we approve said Okay, thank you, William, Mr. Goldfinch. And I believe, who was the second person? Mr. Hyman. And Mr. Hyman, do you- Mayor, I would, I would second Mr. Goldfinch's motion. Thank you so much. Uh, is there any discussion at this time? The silence indicates that there is none. All in favor of the said, uh, first reading uh, being approved, please raise your hand and um, Adam, please count me in on this. Um, Larry, jo uh, sorry, Mr. White, Mr. Jordan, Mr. Hubbard, Mr. Goldfinch, Mr. Hyman, Ms. Timms, and Mayor, you're all hands are raised. Thank you. So uh, that is approved unanimously. Thank you all. Item eight, items for consideration. A, a discussion concerning the donation of decommissioned Extrication, extrication tool to the Academy of Arts and Technology for use with their fire rescue program. Uh, Chief Hendrick. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, the Horry County Academy for Technology and Arts has a fire rescue program. Uh, we recently decommissioned an extrication tool and they do not have the funding to, pur to purchase their own. So staff's recommending uh, donating the tool to the ATA. Sounds like good use of a tool that we have no use for anymore. Uh, is there a motion? I have both uh, Mr. Hyman and Mr. Goldfinch's hands up. All right, um, Mr. Hyman. Um, Mayor, I would uh, move that we uh, allow the extrication to be used by Mr. Goldfinch. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Hyman and Mr. Goldfinch. Mayor, I would second Mr. Hyman's motion. For we have a properly seconded motion. Uh, is there any discussion? Mr. Goldfinch? I believe that's is there a any... hand up. I say, thank you so much. Uh, there is no discussion. Uh, I will call this to a vote. All in favor, if you would please uh, raise your hand. And Mr. Emmerich, if you would count me as a yes. 
we have hands from Mr. White, Mr. Jordan, Mr. Hubbard, Mr. Goldfinch, Mr. Hyman, Ms. Timms, and the mayor. All right, I believe that seven of us. So that motion carries unanimously as well. And Mayor, before we move on, I think there was a question from Mr. White that was sent through the chat app. Yes, uh, I'm sorry. About future liability if the tool malfunctions. Once we've given it to them, it will be theirs to, to have for all, all liability purposes as well. Thank you. Mr. White, does that satisfy your inquiry? Yes, thank you, sir. And thank you, um, Mr. Emmerich. Item B is consideration of a priority list or consideration of priority lists for street resurfacing. Mr. Chestnut. Mayor and Council, you have the proposed resurfacing list. There's only four roads on it this year, but the total is $679,000. The four roads are a section of Sherwood Drive, a section of Long Avenue, a portion of Busby Street, and then all of Pantheon Drive. Um, half of the money would come from city council and then the other half we would request from the CTC at a, one of their future meetings. All right, sir. Thank you. Is there a motion relative to the uh, approval of the priority list as recommended by Mr. Chestnut for street resurfacing in the city? Ms. Timms? Or I'm not sure who was first. When I looked up, I saw Ms. Timms. It looked like both Ms. Timms and Mr. Boyd. All okay. Right. I'll take it. Um, I make a motion <laughs> that we approve the priority listing for street resurfacing. Thank you, Ms. Timms. Mr. White, do you second Thank that you. motion? Second. Thank you, sir. We have a properly seconded motion to approve staff's recommendation in terms of a priority list for street resurfacing. Uh, is there any discussion? There apparently being none, all in favor with a show of hands, please. Mayor, I see hands from Mr. White, Mr. Jordan, Mr. Hubbard, Mr. Goldfinch, Mr. Hyman, yourself, and Ms. Timms. Thank you so much. So that uh, motion carries unanimously. Next is consideration of an amendment to ordinance 2020-0314, ordinance 2020-0314-B to issue a mandatory stay at home order, Mr. Emmerich. Uh, Mayor, in light of the governor's order at four o'clock, uh, I believe that this item is no longer needed. It is moot. Um, I would recommend that we just table this indefinitely. Thank you. And had I thought of it, I would have added it to what I would have um, taken off of the agenda and I apologize for that. Uh, do we need to uh, have a motion to remove this item from the agenda? Both Ms. Timms and Mr. Goldfinch have their hands up. All right, Mr. Goldfinch. Madam Mayor, I move that this be removed from the agenda. Thank you, Ms. Timms, do you second that motion? I second the motion. Thank you, ma'am. We have a properly seconded motion to remove item C from the agenda um, for the reasons as set forth by the city administrator. Uh, all in favor with a show of hands, please. I have hands from Mr. White, Mr. Jordan, Mr. Hubbard, Mr. Goldfinch, Mr. Hyman, yourself, and Ms. Timms. Thank you. That motion carries unanimously. Uh, we are now at the point of hearing from our city administrator for his official report. If, if you will indulge me, this will be a little bit lengthy. Um, I want to go through just tonight, I'm not going to talk about anything but our response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and first, I wanted to walk you through a timeline of our events uh, that we've done internally and external responses to the events related to this event, related to this whole thing. Um, for us, it started in January, January 3rd, 2020, the World Health Organization declared the COVID-19 uh, as a public health matter of concern. On February 25th, we sent our first email to our procurement department asking them to stock up on hand sanitizer, Lysol wipes, and Lysol. Uh, we got a response from our procurement department that they were also looking to stock up on our PPE supplies. PPE supplies is something you're going to hear a lot in the news. You might hear me talk about it tonight. That is our personal protective equipment. It's our masks, our gloves, um, the face shield, something to protect the eyes, those sort of protective devices. On February 27th, we had our first department head staff meeting. 
where we discussed the COVID-19 virus. Um, it was very early in the event and uh, we discussed what sort of things we would need to set in motion if it became more serious in the city of Conway. On March 11th, we had another staff meeting, this time to go over the impact of COVID-19 as it was much more serious at this point. Um, we announced at that staff meeting that it would be the last in-person staff meeting that we would have for a while and started social distancing practices at that point. On March 13th, Governor McMaster issued a state of emergency for the state, was followed on the 14th by Horry County declaring a state of emergency and by us declaring a state of emergency later that day and closing all city buildings to the public. On March 15th, we had our first reported case in Horry County. At that point, we'd reduced workforce offering to send anyone determined to be at high risk home for pay with two, for two weeks. We shifted to a work from home schedule with as much staff as possible. We started varying our schedules to avoid overlap and social distancing. We canceled all youth sports following the lead of Horry County Schools. We also placed a COVID-19 tab on our website with information that we update daily and still do with the latest information from our school district, from Conway Medical Center, from DHEC, from the governor's office and from the CDC. On March 16th, we requested the DHEC provide additional location information to assist the city in response and protection of first responders and other departments that might, may come into contact with contamination. On March 18th, we closed all playgrounds to limit close contact with the public and asked the public to start bagging all garbage to help the, our solid waste employees in their contact with potentially contaminated garbage. On March 21st, 21st we began letting restaurants block parking spaces off to offer curbside pickup of food and to avoid in, in dining, inside dining. On March 23rd, the mayor began weekly video updates on our city's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. These are posted to the city's website, to the access channel, and to social media. On March 24th, we had our first reported death in Horry County. Parks and Recreation staff began, began offering at-home fitness classes posted to YouTube and linked from the city's social media accounts. On March 27th, DHEC releases the only day of zip code information before stopping this process briefly. On March 30th, the governor ordered the closure of all public boat ramps, including the cities. On March 31st, the governor ordered non-essential businesses to close, including th theaters, bingo parlors, gyms, and other athletic facilities. Um, on April 1st, we had our first known death in the city limits. On April 2nd, pursuant to governor's executive order of 331, all tennis courts and basketball courts were closed. On March 3rd, the governor issued additional executive orders, closing additional non-essential businesses, which take effect, took effect today at 5 p.m. Um, we also were asked to look at a mandatory stay-at-home order after that, uh, the governor's press conference on the 3rd and was scheduled for today, which fortunately, again, the governor passed that stay-at-home order at 4 o'clock today and uh, removed that need for our, our discussion. We're fortunate right now not to have anyone on city staff who has tested positive for the coronavirus. However, we're having some major impacts of, from the virus on our staffing. We have three individuals that are in self-quarantine showing symptoms of the virus. We have six individuals on self-quarantine that have come into contact with someone who has either had the virus or who has been tested for the virus and the results have not yet come back. We've had 15 other employees who are out as high risk or due to childcare issues or other medical issues. We have 25 employees, mostly at the recreation department who are on voluntary temporary leave. That's 39 employees right now that we are down and, and um, it's starting to affect us in some ways. We are six men down in our solid waste department alone. Eventually that's going to have, have to have an impact on the services that we offer to our citizens. We've shifted a lot of operations around to keep things afloat for now, but as this thing continues to progress, we know that we'll have to change the way we're doing things across the board. We also have 16 people work, working from home and they're continuing producing the same amount of work as they were before. As we can, we're adding more to that, to that number. We're going to have to implement some additional changes starting tomorrow. First, the drive through window at the finance department will have some shortened hours. Instead of being open from eight to five, it will be open from nine to four. We are down seven employees in our finance department and there are a number of operational items that need to be addressed both before and after the drive through opens. We have a line at the drive through from open to close currently. All customers will be assisted even with the shortened hours, but we need a little bit of time to be able to, to handle the, the influx of, of information coming in through that, that facility. 
Our water meeting reading will continue. However, we, we will not disconnect any services for non-payment at this time. We encourage all of our customers to use our online bill pay for their water bills. The convenience charge will be credited to the bill as well. So we're not charging that $2.50 fee. We're asking that while there's a shortage of toilet paper, some may be using flushable wipes. Those are not flushable, even though people do so and they're advertised as such. They may flush through your toilet, but they're, they're likely to jam up our lift stations and our pump stations, causing much bigger issues, potentially inundating mul multiple homes with sewage. Please do not flush flushable wipes. All trash should be placed in bags and then into the green trash cans. This is to limit contact with our solid waste employees and lower the risk of potential harm. If you are in quarantine or are known to be positive, please do not recycle during this time. Only use the green, the green cans. Place all your refuse and bags in those green cans and please make sure that all your items are either in the green can or in the blue recycling can to limit the amount of handling that is required by our solid waste employees. We're struggling to keep up with yard debris and bulk item pickup. Please be patient with us and we'll continue these services for as long as possible. A lot of solid waste departments throughout the country are ending both bulk service and yard debris pickup for this reason. Um, we have purchased a new roll off truck and 10 new roll off containers. If the virus continues to spread and collection is no longer safe, we will move to asking the residents to bring their bag garbage to convenience areas and to place their garbage directly into dumpsters. They're not there yet. We hope not to ever be, but we're prepared for that eventuality if we are. All playgrounds and tennis courts are currently closed. Basketball rims have been removed from the, basket, from the backboards. Our parks are open for walking, biking, and hiking so long as social distancing is practiced. All sports leagues have been canceled. This is also consistent with the governor's order today for recreation. Our planning and building departments are open and fully staffed, although they, were, although they are closed for the public access. Currently, all building permits are being accepted. However, we are, we are offer, or, sorry, we are giving ourselves the ability to refuse inspections if there are multiple people occupying a dwelling and it makes it unsafe for our building inspectors to do so. That has not happened yet, but it's out there as, as a possibility. Um, other jurisdictions are looking at only inspecting new builds or outside inspections, not doing any interior inspections. We've not gone to that yet, although it is something we're considering if, it, if need arises. Calls are being screened differently at dispatch for our public safety. If they have a suspected COVID-19 patient, it will, call, it will only call for an ambulance crew unless there is, unless there is a life-threatening event like a cardiac arrest. Upon arrival, our fire department personnel will not enter the residence or the building unless the patient is in a life-threatening condition. They will stay outside and wait for EMS. Even once EMS arrives, every attempt will be made to limit the number of personnel that come into contact with the patient. If personnel are to come into contact, they must use their full PPE. All medical responses, the highest, on all medical responses, the highest ranking medical person on scene will go inside to make contact using full PPE. They will ask standard CDC questions and determine if they may be a suspected COVID-19 patient. If they are confirmed, it defaults to the process above. On all medical incidents, we assume that the patient is infected unless we have definitive proof otherwise. Here at City Hall, we are skeleton staffed. We have at most four people in the building at one time. Mary Catherine Hyman, John Rogers, and I are taking turns working in this building and working from home to reduce the chance of any one of us contaminating the other. All city calls coming into, this, into the building are still answered by Tasha. She is here every day um, answering calls and, um, and there, there's some very interesting calls coming in right now. Um, normally we put the budget on the May calendars for consideration. However, given the impact from the coronavirus and how that is going to affect our budget is still unknown. We're going to push the budget readings until June calendars to allow for a better understanding and picture of where we are and what challenges might need to be considered from the budget retreat. Uh, as we get closer to that time, we'll update council on those further things. We also will update council on what the different federal government stimulus packages are, have an effect on our budget and what um, avenues we may need to take to, to implement those. Uh, but that will come closer as we get to the, to, to the, the budget readings. DHEC puts out daily updates and is now updating us again with zip code data for each confirmed case. As of today at 3 p.m., there were 2,049 positive cases in South Carolina, 
with 44 statewide deaths. I know that there's been some more recent information released since that 3 p.m. update. Um, I do know that Horry County now has 76 confirmed positive cases with seven deaths, and that includes two additional that were reported to us at 4 p.m. and 12 additional positive cases at 4 p.m. Yesterday, the last zip code update showed 29526 is having five, I'm sorry, six cases, and 527 is having nine cases. DHEC projections now include 8,053 presumed positive cases by May 5th. That is an increase of 6,000 cases in a relatively short amount of time. Um, obviously, this has been all we're doing for the most part, day in, day out, um, there are, with, it, with few exceptions. Um, the, the good news is we've been through a number of disasters before. Someone delivered a frame quote to me last week without a card, I don't know who it was from, and it said, this too shall pass. And I think those are pretty fitting words to end my report, and I'll be happy to answer any questions if there are. Thank you so much, Adam. I see that uh, Mr. Goldfinch's hand has been raised. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Adam, I just was gonna add that I talked to a contractor earlier today, and apparently in Brunswick County, what they're doing with building license inspectors, no, building inspectors, I'm sorry, is that the building inspector will get there and all of the uh, employees or construction crew exits the building and lets the inspector do their job so they're not around anybody. And it allows work to continue with uh, you know, keeping them safe. So little things like that that we can implement, I think will go a long way. I'll make that suggestion to Robert Cooper tomorrow and implement it immediately. Are there other questions or comments? There are two, Ms. I don't know who they are. Ms. Timms. Yes. Adam, do we have any sort of report from Conway Medical Center uh, in addition to what's on their website about their capabilities, their needs, and are any ways that we sh anything that we should be aware of? Uh, we, we do not get that information. It is reported to DHEC. Um, every once in a while, we do hear updates from Conway Medical Center. I think I spoke to them a couple times in the last two weeks. Mayor, I know you attempted to reach out to them as well. I do know that they're working on a remodel of one of their buildings, and we're prepared to issue them a, a temporary um, certificate of occupancy so they can move into that building if needed. Uh, that, that, came in, that request came in today. So um, I know that they're preparing for additional flow. Um, as of right now, I believe they have enough ventilators and beds. Uh, everybody is in short supply of the PPE equipment. There are not enough masks. There are not enough gowns. There are not enough anything. Uh, I know Mr. Jordan could probably speak more to that than I could, but we are, we're, we're in contact with CMC. We don't get updates from them on the, the staffing and beds and things like that. Um, but I know DHEC does, and I think a lot of that information is available at DHEC's website as well. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, Mr. Emmerich, we really appreciate it. Um, it is thorough and, and Thank you so much for, for preparing it. Um, we'll now have council input rather than uh, rotate from my vision of what council members look like. Let's do alphabetically. So in this order, Mr. Goldfinch, Mr. Hubbard, Mr. Hyman, Mr. Jordan, Ms. Timms, and Mr. White. Mayor, I don't, I don't have anything to go finish. Just stay safe and social distance and be grateful for all that we have. We've still got a lot to be thankful for and uh, we'll get through this. This too shall pass. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hubbard. Uh, yeah, Mayor, really quick. And uh, there's some resources out there that people don't know about. And in my business or agency, we are uh, having issues with doctor's visits. This is in no way an endorsement but there's a company called South Carolina House Calls. They will come to your house. And if Taylor wants to put this on the website, it's 1-800-491-0909. It eliminates trips to doctor's offices. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hubbard. Mr. Hyman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just briefly, I, I wanted to, um, to, to kind of give a brief shout out to uh, the chief uh, Chief Long, 
Um, last Tuesday, uh, there was a very brief powder, power outage and my neighbor's alarm went off and he was out of town and we had uh, very quickly, um, we had law enforcement show up and it was, I'm gonna read these officers out just because I was very, very impressed with them. Um, it was a Kelsey Manimet, David Fassbender and Forrest Reed. Uh, they arrived and Officer Watford, their supervisor arrived shortly after, um, but they were very professional, uh, uh, made me very, very proud of our city. Um, and then I found out later that uh, it was Kelsey Manimet's uh, second night uh, uh, as one of our officers. So uh, Chief, good job. Um, also Chief, just wanna let you know that we, um, we support you. I, I think that um, given the uh, the governor's newest um, executive order, uh, that executive order does give um, our municipalities, our counties, our sheriffs, um, our, our agencies, the ability to enforce um, that order. So uh, I think that is something we should support. And um, given these times uh, of uncertainty, uh, the best way to, to keep everybody um, uh, away from each other is to enforce that order. Um, I, I just uh, just want to make that that uh, a point that we we may need to look into that in the future. But um, the executive order specifically talks about local enforcement of that. Um, but that's all I've got. Everybody, stay safe. Thank you so much, Mr. Hyman. Mr. Jordan. Thank you, Mayor. I, as everyone else has said, you know, I want to remind everybody to stay safe. Um, practice our social distancing. As you know, in, in my industry in healthcare, we're we're obviously seeing a lot of a lot of issues with the PPE gear. Um, as Adam said earlier, you know it's uh, it's it's a big issue. Um, so you know we just want to remind everybody to obviously uh, stay safe, wash your hands, keep your social distance. Um, and as Alex said, you know that hopefully we need to um, you know try to try to reinforce the uh, executive orders that have come from the governor's office and you know, take care of those locally. Thank you so much, sir. Ms. Timms. I was very pleased to see that the governor would put in place today his stay at home order. And I think that that will, will help us to be better equipped to manage what's coming and certainly maybe to lessen what's coming. Um, I've learned a lot of new things during this time at home. I've learned, well, for one thing, I'm practicing how to use Zoom, but I've learned how to order groceries online. It's a wonderful thing. I may never go back to the old way of shopping. Um, but I'd like to encourage those younger people in the community to take care of someone near you that may need your help and can't get out or is frightened to do so. I've had my neighbors help me a lot and I appreciate it. Um, I think that we all need to take care of each other and we've always been good at that. That's a strong suit for Conway. Conway strong doesn't come from the fact that we don't do the things that we need to do and I appreciate that value. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thames. And Mr. White. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. And to all of you, good afternoon. Uh, I want to also say uh, ditto to everything that has been said because I'm being the last one. Y'all said all the good stuff. So I do want to remind everybody to practice your distancing before, I mean, between yourself and someone else. And wear your masks and gloves. Wash your hands. Thank you, Mr. White. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't say that I agree with everything that was said. I just have a few items uh, on behalf of the city for anybody who gets a chance to tell our healthcare providers, our uh, first responders, those that are involved, who work for the city of Conway and beyond. Uh, we are so grateful for the sacrifices and for the risks you take for us, uh, which is another reason for us to practice safe habits. Uh, too many lives are being put at risk to keep us safe for us to make foolish decisions and throw that out of the window. So just remember that lives can be saved by those very practices that everybody has just spoken of. Uh, I believe 
this was at the third one, but today is my first actual witnessing of a parade of teachers. I was at home. There was incessant honking of, of car horns and I suddenly realized what it might have been and I didn't want to miss it. I ran out to be greeted by what seemed like hundred cars, uh, I believe led by our police, certainly uh, at the tail end, our police were present, but teachers and, and staff from local schools with uh, balloons and streamers and, and, and cards that said, we miss you, uh, stay safe, we can't wait to see you again. Um, just one of those things that instills a lot of pride and, and hope uh, said to me that this too will in fact pass. William, as you said, uh, when you can stay at home, the more you do that, the better. Uh, the virus spreads by human contact and, and it's a no brainer. When you cannot stay at home, uh, practice social distancing, wash your hands over and over again. I've got lots of lotion if you need some. Uh, if you contract symptoms that give you cause to be concerned about coronavirus or COVID-19, by all means, contact a medical professional. Um, for those people, uh, several of whom I've had conversation with and, and others are having thoughts about our not being a part of the vastness and the, the, the true outstretch of this disease, this horrid disease. One of the reasons our numbers are so low is because people in our area are literally not being tested. Uh, there was a, a news story that said that two of our premier uh, local hospitals were in fact setting up opportunities for people to do a drive-through much like we've seen on national television. Uh, I re had a recent occasion to need to take a friend to be checked and this person has some um, chronic respiratory issues and was having difficulty breathing. Uh, I chose uh, from um, among the, the hospitals that were supposed to have these facilities, uh, the largest one on the Strand and was met there with nothing. There were no signs, there were no tents. Um, I proceeded to the emergency room and the staff there said that if this person is seriously having trouble breathing, they need to be inside. They need to come into the emergency room. The closest place to get a test done is in testing from your car, I should say. Uh, my friend was seen in the emergency room. I was sent away. My car capitalized. You will not be tested. There just aren't sufficient numbers of tests. So I don't want us to feel too safe and secure because our numbers are short. Those numbers relate to those people who have undergone uh, official testing. And I don't know how many thousands of people there may be walking around this every day who have either had symptoms who have been exposed, who have attempted to be tested or not, who are carrying the virus. You cannot look at anybody and tell. And our numbers are low because the tests are not being submitted. We are in fact alone together. Uh, it's been said in many ways from several of our council members that this is just another opportunity to show our real resilience um, to, to show our faith and, and to be who we say we are. And that is Conway Strong by looking out for each other. Uh, at this time, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Hubbard. And Mr. White. I move the Thank week. you. Go ahead, please. Shane, was that, or sorry, Mr. Hubbard, was that a second? Uh, it was a first, but I'll second as well. Okay.
Yeah. Mayor, if you your hand for that I'm all in favor of the show of hands, please. And now suddenly I'm not hearing anything. There we go. Let's try again. Uh, Mr. White, Ms. Ms. Timms, Mr. Jordan, Mr. Hubbard, Mr. Hyman, and I believe uh, Mr. Goldfinch's computer restarted in the middle of the meeting. So um, will you have a majority without his vote? Okay. Well, um, and that is certainly sufficient. Um, take care of yourself. Take care of you all. Good night. Thank you all. Appreciate your time and effort. Thank you. Look at you guys. Only leave, but I've been trying. <laughs>